It's Monday on the week of May 28th, 2018, and we're here to give you your board game news roundup so you can get ready for the rest of the week. The popular board game, Betrayal at House on the Hill, is getting a little love in the form of an upgrade kit for some of its disappointing components. From WizKid, this kit will include some new dice, similar in the 0, 1, and 2, but in a green and yellow theme, so a bit more thematic, but more excitingly, upgraded versions of the hero tiles. If you've played the game before, you know these tiles are keeping track of stats using little clips, which tend to either fall off or move. Very annoying, or even damage the parts. These will actually have wheels on each side to keep track of the components, the, your stats, which are really important because it makes it a lot of things a lot easier, it'll look nicer, and it has some new art, which is a bit more colorful and cartoony, but still has the same characters, their stats, their dates, and stuff like that. So, really cool upgrade, and if you're a fan of the game, honestly, it almost feels like a must-buy, personally. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we have complained many times, <laughs> uh, both on air and while playing Betrayal, about those little clips. It's definitely something that every, everyone has been asking for for a long time. There is, there is a little bit, it seems like, of potentially a trade-off with these new versions, however, which is that the wheels that scroll through your numbers now, you won't be able to see how far away you are from death or what your next stat is going to be when you go up a level or down a level, which is something that I feel was a bit helpful as you were playing to be able to know that information. That is true. However, because this is not replacing, it's an upgrade kit, you could just give the person their tile and they could see. You could have both. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, true, but it's a little less than a perfect, uh, than a perfect solution. True, but it's... <laughs> I think it's worth the sacrifice. I don't know. The honestly, one, I don't know. Honestly, for me, the big thing, and mm -hmm. it's a small thing, but it's the artwork. Because mm. I sort of like the artwork on the original as sort of the black and white. It has that more horror theme. These, mm. and yes, I know that there is some comical stuff like, I, I think it's the bull was his name or something. Like his <laughs> hobbies Ox. were shiny things. <laughs> so there is some funny stuff in there. But the artwork seems that too cartoony for me. Mm. Personally, yeah. I mean, it's not a big thing comparatively. I think the trade-off is still fantastic. So it's nice that mm -hmm. they are thinking of us at last. But yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe not. They could have, considering how much time they've had to work on this, I just feel like they could have made it perfect. Well, maybe that time went into a different product. Maybe. <laughs> Shortly after that upgrade kit is released for Betrayal at House on the Hill, we are also going to be getting the new Betrayal at House on the Hill Legacy, the legacy version of the game from its original designer Rob Davio and inventor of the legacy genre as well. This is coming out in November. We already knew about the game's existence, but a little bit more information has come out about it, specifically from an exclusive Game Informer interview that came out with a lot of interesting new tidbits. Uh, we got some more details on how exactly the game will work, such as the fact that you are going to be different family members working throughout the game, and every time you play a scenario, it's going to be in a different year. Uh, and some of those years span quite a wide time range. They said as recent as 2004, and as early as back to maybe the 1700s. And they've tried to tailor the themes of those different years to what people thought was scary in those times. So there might be an Edgar Allan Poe-esque era, there might be a Frankenstein-esque haunt that you have to deal with. And essentially as you're playing, you're going to be trying to find different family heirlooms throughout the house, working for yourself, and if you get to find those heirlooms, you're going to be placing stickers, etc., to claim them for your family name, because you're playing as different generations as the game goes on. And there's a lot of stuff, it sounds like, that will change as time goes on. Depending on who discovers a room and how, that will permanently affect that room going forward. Uh, even some of the descriptions and events that come out will change. And we know there's going to be a lot of new tiles and cards in this as well, but... Uh, we don't know the entire component list, of course, because it's a legacy game, so some of that stuff's going to be secret and coming out the more that you play it. But uh, as, as someone who has kind of fallen out of love with the Betrayal game, I'm pretty excited for the legacy version. I think it has the potential to really reinvigorate that game. And, and all, everything that they're talking about sounds very cool. And also to bounce off of what you were saying 
with the new art on the, that upgrade kit that you don't like, one of the things he said in this interview was they're going for more of a PG-13 than PG vibe. And specifically in relation to the original game, he wants it to be more on the serious side and spookier even than, than just the original game was. I think one of the reasons, at least I'm looking forward to it a little bit more, is as you said, like, for example, if you're, in, if you're playing the year the like 1900s or something, you're not going to get, okay, there's aliens and robots and stuff. You know, <laughs> the fact that they're looking to sync up means I think there's less likely that those moments when we played original Betrayal, like, you know, when like the haunt happened right away and you're like, well, this is not going to end well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but more thematic uh, tie-ins will be good. This, the fact you play through a family each time sounds really cool. Like you can sort of make a family tree kind of deal. Yeah, it's a, it's a really unique idea of progression. Uh, maybe one of the coolest things about the game also is the fact that uh, once you've played through the campaign, which is I think 14 scenarios, mm -hmm. You can still play the game, unlike a lot of other legacy games. There are still going to be haunts left that you haven't tried, and it's going to be unique to you. So I feel like this might even, this could be like replace your copy of Betrayal completely if you like it enough. It might just be a yeah. better game. No, I do think that's definitely an exciting thing. Well, we will find out when this game releases in the very spooky month of November. <laughs> Fantasy Flight has announced for the 42nd anniversary of Cosmic Encounter, it'll be coming out with a new edition of the base game. This will include a new art on the cover, as well as a quick starter guide and some combo cards to tell you which races to play as in case you want to make a, have a fun game, which is nice. But it will also come with the Demon Race, which is actually a promo from a previous convention. Uh, you are a huge fan of this game. Mm -hmm. That's and true, I am. <laughs> you do already have the base and view expansions. Oh, and it has some new components. I forgot, like, little translucent UFOs that look nice. Mm -hmm. Are you... Is this enough for you to... Uh, well, this was... I, I was actually relieved that that I don't want this. Okay. <laughs> uh, it sounds like it's really... The main thing that they're doing with this, I, it sounds like, is just kind of upgrading the rule book and helping people who aren't familiar with the game maybe get into it quicker. Uh, but it's still compatible with all those expansions. There is no change in it. It doesn't sound like the text even on any of the cards. Uh, so it really sounds like just a, n a new edition in the barest uh, minimum uh, that you can make a new edition. I do find it interesting because reading it, because if, a lot of it seems to be for if you've never played before. Mm -hmm. But then the Demon was a convention exclusive. And it reminds mm -hmm. me a lot when uh, they did the second edition of King of Tokyo that there was the Space Penguin, which was a convention exclusive. Yeah, I think... And it seems it's sort of like, <laughs> I don't want it, but, right. I mean, you know... <laughs> that is definitely their one, like, we gotta give them something, right? Mm -hmm. To make them want to buy it, so we'll give them that. And also, I mean, it wouldn't make any sense for them to really overhaul everything because... I think the last expansion only came out like last year. Like they're pretty, I feel like they would just be eating into their own, like shooting themselves in the in the foot by negating those expansions because they're already so established. True, but the fact, I do like the idea of a lot of the beginner stuff in there, particularly those cards, because how many times we've we been like, I guess I'll be this one or this one. The fact you could be like, okay, this will be a great one because we like people who like to mess around and switch roles or we like people who this, so... Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And the other thing that's great about those is uh, you can just look at a picture of them online <laughs> if you already have the base game and just make those up. You really don't need the game at all. But if it's like real cheap and I'm bored, I may decide to pick it and up. And I'm bored. I don't really love the new box art either. I feel like the old one was so iconic. It, like I, I think that alien is just, to me, that just cosmic encounter. Right. So I, I'm a little surprised they decided to change that, but they had to do something. Uh, I mean, they want to make it different. And my guess is they just like, showed a bunch of art to people and say, which one do you like the best? <laughs> yeah, like, probably. You know. <laughs> Clank in Space is getting its very first expansion for release of this year's Gen Con called Apocalypse, in which you will have to face off against the evil Eraticus, which sounds like a name George Lucas would come up with for somebody. <laughs> uh, and it comes with two new double-sided boards, plus a bunch of new cards, compatible only with the Clank in Space base set. Uh, it also comes with something known as scheme cards, eight oversized scheme cards, they said, which 
They haven't gone into detail on exactly what that does, but considering this is a deck building game and we've seen similar things, of course, in something like uh, Marvel Legendary, for instance, it sounds like maybe this will be a thing that changes up the setup of the game or, or some of the rules as you play, which could be very interesting. Uh, we haven't played Clank in Space, but we've played just Clank and I, they're pretty similar. Uh, so uh, this, this is kind of cool if you're someone who picked up more of the space theme, you might want to try this one out. Possibly deciding to finally follow in the footsteps of Call of Duty. The popular World War II board game Axis and Allies is making a new game called Axis and Allies Zombies. In this game you'll be playing like the original one, uh, trying to defeat either the Axis or the Allies, but there'll also be a twist of zombies appearing on the map, controlled sort of by the game. So you'll have to worry about adding more casualties and therefore making more zombies and trying to defeat two opponents at the same time. Like I said, this seems to be like a few years late. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least a few years late. Yeah, I think we. I think even board games are over the zombie craze now. <laughs> We're all on Cthulhu now. I mean, it's definitely interesting taking this heavy World War II game and adding something like that. Maybe that's this. They're just start because they know it would work. It, yeah, like I would have been cool. I think we mentioned the Kickstarter a while back of like World War II Australia with Cthulhu. Oh, right, uh, Australia. <laughs> right, so maybe like something like that could have been interesting, like you maybe secretly choose an Elder God in the beginning and they send different minions around, so it's not just simple as zombies. Yeah, I don't know. It is. Then again, that's just Hellboy. Then <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly surprising. Like I never. This is not a series. I think anyone would have thought they would spice up with like science fiction elements. Yeah. But uh, it, we'll see. I guess maybe they were just like, we gotta get after these millennials. They don't like World War II anymore. We gotta put, give them something. I don't know. I think judging by video games, we still like World War II. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we do. <laughs> we're a weird country. <laughs> Here's an exciting new Gen Con release that was just announced, Meat. No, this is not a board game. Gen Con has announced they are partnering with the butcher company Smoking Goose based in Indianapolis to produce their own special branded meats. This is not a joke, this is not from The Onion or anything like that. They're really doing this. Uh, they have announced two specific types of meats to start their uh, launch line of meats. Uh, Dragonfire Bacon and Epic Level Andouille. Both are going to be kind of on the spicy side, it sounds like, cooked with different peppers or cinnamon. Uh, they have detailed descriptions uh, from smokinggoose.com, where I think you're also gonna be able to order some of these meats. And presumably, they'll be for sale somewhere around uh, Gen Con later this year. But uh, from reading the descriptions, they did sound kind of good. They do kind of make me want some meat. <laughs> yeah, during Jonathan's report, I pre-ordered a crate of each. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you're gonna have to because there's gonna be a line. And I, if you want to get the first edition so you can get that promo sausage, <laughs> that's really important. I, I gotta say, I was thinking about how like video games, you know, when they partner up with foods, they partner up with Hot Pockets, Monster Energy Drink, board gamers. Uh, a nice, in, like, small beer company, some meat, some artisanal cheese. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. They did say they wanted to target, uh, you know, board gamers with these products, but I mean, it's just, it's just meat. Apparently we're all hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we love spicy meat. <laughs> I don't know. Let's say meat more times. But I'm, I'm kind of, uh, well, I'm looking forward to and not looking forward to the day of Gen Con when I go out and drink a Gen Con beer, then eat some Gen Con meat, <laughs> and then have to go back inside and play games, and I want to pass out. <laughs> well, don't forget the Gen Con dessert of blood pudding. Hmm. <laughs> Finally, let's go over the releases coming out this week. We got some cool stuff in both new games and expansions. From Fantasy Flight, we got two new expansions for the popular Star Wars Legion line. We've got Fleet Troopers, as well as Leia, to add to your army of minis. In addition, we also got from Simon Way of the Panda, which is a game where you'll be taking on different panda legions and trying to defeat ninjas in order to rebuild cities and gain honor and prove you should be the one named as Panda Emperor. For all you role players out there, there's a new D&D &D book being released, Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, that focuses on enemies and different species and strange creatures, and of course, all of their stats for all your needs in your game. And then there's also the new Rick and Morty game from Cryptozoic, The Ricks Must Be Crazy, which is a small kind of standalone game, not part of the deck building universe or anything like that, that we are actually gonna have a review for later in the week, as well as some other cool stuff happening related to that game. So if you're a Rick and Morty fan, you can stay tuned for that. Uh, but uh, 
pretty exciting for for the D and D release, and uh, we have not been able to pick up Legion for ourselves just yet. But I, the Leia character sounds kind of cool. She uses her um, like leadership abilities and, and the kind of actions she can do. So she helps. She's kind of a, almost a support character for other troopers. Well, considering that in the most recent trilogy that she's considered general, right? Exactly. One would hope that she'd be very good at moving around <laughs> troops. That's her forte, right there. <laughs> But that's all our news we have for the week of the 28th in May. Uh, let us know if you're planning to pick up any of the games we just talked about or if you're going to pick up some of that meat. <laughs> yeah, mm, get that meat, baby. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on the upgrade kit finally coming out for Betrayal? Or are you just going to wait and buy Betrayal Legacy? Uh, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, and of course, don't forget to subscribe and like. But until then, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this has been Roll for Crit News. Hey, if you like what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like this video for more excellent board game content. Heck yeah!